maybe we are just what do you call that uh, academic social butterfly we, we can't sit still in one organ <laughs>I'm Dr. Lo Jiaxen. Uh, I practice in an infectious disease specialist group. We have uh, uh, some clinics in private hospitals. I run three of the clinics in Farrah Park Hospital, uh, Mount Elizabeth Novena Hospital and Glen Eagles Hospital. Infectious disease is a, is, a, is a very broad term. It's a very broad term. So uh, certainly um, with more human concentration and more people circulating with the you know compared to last century ago where people mostly travel within 100 to 10 to 100 kilometer of where they stay certainly in this century uh, transmission of infectious diseases uh, is on the rise okay as a general term and mainly we see in this pandemic firstly we have respiratory virus pandemic influenza uh, seasonal influenza epidemics and pandemics when you say a lot of people, yes, a lot of people now compared to when people could not travel so much and when the world was not so concentrated. But still, it is uh, with simple precautions, all these diseases have specific routes of transmission and some of these routes are, frankly speaking, quite difficult. Like sexually transmitted disease is, is going to be quite difficult or blood-borne transmission, right? So uh, I don't think people need to be overly worried. Eh? Most of my cases are divided into uh, cases with known diagnosis and cases with no known diagnosis. Uh. If it's a known diagnosis, and by the time if they have to refer to an infectious disease uh, uh, physician, usually it's, uh, the diagnosis is quite, people are uncomfortable treating them, right? So for example, uh, HIV, most people are uncomfortable treating HIV because the, the signs may be a bit more more nuanced and require some specialist input. So that's one category where the, or, or a difficult to treat infection, like a post-surgery infection, a complicated infection, many, many bacteria. So complicated infection. So that one, it's not a diagnostic problem. Then the other hand are, are, are things that have not yet a diagnosis made, which means a patient will present with a strange collection uh, of symptoms, signs, complaints, history. So there we have to do a lot, uh, a bit of Sherlock Holmes thing. So where we try to tease apart and interrogate the, the, the history, the blood results, and then those cases are, are also part of our work. Of course, the infectious disease textbook is, uh, <laughs> is very heavy. So uh, most of them would, I suppose, would be uncommon. And uh, a lot of them are, are, of course, they are infectious diseases. So like, for example, some example of infectious diseases that are uncommon would be like uh, non-tuberculous mycobacterium, which is uh, very difficult to treat, uh, usually called difficult to treat lung condition. They are like um, a cousin of tuberculosis, but they are not tuberculosis. They are in the same group, but they are not considered tuberculosis. It can be very, very challenging to treat them and these people uh, can get uh, quite long-term uh, debilitating lung damage. The other rare infections that sometimes uh, people don't hear about are deep fungal infections. Certainly people are comfortable with uh, or heard of a superficial fungal infection like uh, athlete's foot, ringworms, uh, skin fungal infections. But uh, sometimes some of these, they are rare, deep fungal infections of the brain, of the blood. Those are the rarer uh, infectious diseases that we have to deal with. Lah. The concept is generally this. It depends on who this person is. A person who is previously young, healthy, of no um, previous medical problem would be able to hang in there with their symptoms. It would be appropriate to just sleep it off a few days. Compared to somebody who has many illnesses, previous unusual infections, or is a background of immunocompromised, these people should attend uh, to medical attention at the, f at the very early instance or the first instance of something unusual happening, right? So the, the, of course, the idea is if you are a normal person, there's the risk of you getting something rare and dangerous is much less. So included in this category are also people with uh, previous prosthesis uh, implanted. 
So either it could be a joint implant, hip implant, or it could be a spine implant. Some people have a heart implant, heart, um, pacemakers and all that. So all these things predisposed to infection. So if there's some new symptoms, for example, if the, the pacemaker is suddenly painful and swollen, so this should not wait. Right. Yeah, so that's, that's the rule. <laughs>